How are we doing Thrivers? As promised in our shorts preview today, we're going to talk about boundaries. I think we've talked about those wily narcs quite a bit. I know I published a video on some of the ways that narcissists or narcs, including covert narcs, devalue us. Are you a narcissist? Do you know a narcissist? And the different ways that narcs unload shame on us. And so in thinking about it, I decided it's time to kind of flip the script a little bit and talk about us. How are we thriving the matrix? And what can I offer you as far as advice for doing the same? And I'd be interested in what you're doing to make it work for you in the comments. So as always, please leave them when you have something to share. But my formula for thriving the matrix is simple. It is braving. And that word comes from Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. Here's a video on YouTube. It's excellent. I would challenge you. You will not have a dry eye after watching it. I will definitely put the link in the description. The word braving is an acronym. Each letter stands for something. And today we're going to talk about boundaries. So before we begin, we're going to have the normal formalities. If you like this content, please hit the like button. That makes sure this content is pushed out to other people that may enjoy it, just like you have, hopefully. And only when I'm providing consistent, quality, fun, and informational videos, should you hit that subscribe button, I'd be honored if you would, and I appreciate the support. Before we begin, you know I have one other disclaimer, and that is I am not a psychologist, a clinician, a therapist, or a life coach, although I am an aspiring one, and I'll let you know as soon as that's underway. For now, I am only giving my experience in healing from uh, narc abuse and healing from toxic relationships with those in my life that are controlling or may have some degree of NPD. And before we get into braving and boundaries, you're going to want to stick around for this entire video because I'm going to have an activity for you at the end and I really want to see you complete that in the comments. G.I. Joe said learning is half the battle, but I would argue the second half is putting what you've learned into practice and I'd love to see you do that. So part one, what is braving? Braving is an acronym and it's the way that we hold ourselves and the people in our lives accountable and build trusting relationships. And this formula can be used with the controllers or narcs in your life as well, but healthy friends, healthy relationships are not immune to breathing, and of course neither are we. So both parties should be practicing breathing. If one of the letters in the acronym is not being met, that's something to take a look at and to evaluate whether you have something you need to own or if you need to hold others accountable because remember, actions have consequences. And today we're going to talk about boundaries and there will be consequences to crossing those boundaries. So B, boundaries. We'll talk about that in a minute. Can't say it enough apparently. R is reliability. So do we do what we say and say what we do? A is accountability. When we make a mistake, when we wrong somebody, when we evaluate our day and think, hmm, I could have said that differently to so-and-so, or maybe it wasn't a good idea to do X. That's when we take a personal inventory, own it, and find a way to make amends. And we should inventory that and the behavior we use to overcome it so that we do not have to hold ourselves accountable for that particular action again. B is for the vault, and that's very interesting. I think that would be one of the more nuanced, fascinating videos. The vault is, I may not repeat anything you say, but if I'm talking to you and repeating what others say and using their stories as currency to get a connection with you, then I'm not within the vault. And that's gonna affect being able to have a trusting relationship. The I is for integrity. We don't do what's quick, fast, and easy, although I do try to make these videos quick, fast, not easy. Um, we do what's right. Finally, we have N for non-judgment. We're allowed to make mistakes and so are others, right? And we'll give them the opportunity to hold themselves accountable or give us the opportunity to hold ourselves accountable, get back up and continue breathing. Finally, the G is for generosity and that simply means positive intent. So before we start down a rabbit hole of why somebody did something and what they were trying to do to us when they didn't, we should be generous in our assessment of the situation and assume positive intent. Assume everybody's doing the best they can within their own constraints and conditions. Give them the opportunity to brave, be reliable, take accountability, honor the vault, do that with integrity, and be able to count on you for being non-judgmental and generous in your interpretation of their actions. So that's braving. So let's talk about boundaries. Boundaries are simply what defines what is and what is not acceptable behavior, both in the way that people treat us and the way we treat others. So not only do we have to set boundaries and hold folks accountable for them, but we should ask what others are when we don't know and honor those as well. I could admit before my healing journey began, I had no boundaries. And there's a very simple reason for that, I think. Well, number one, I think I was just a jerk. And number two, I was raised by people without boundaries. I've definitely been in situations where I've met people and it slipped out of my mouth. Is that hair on purpose? Definitely times when I've been entitled in people's homes and helped myself to food without asking. I'm not saying I was Goldilocks and the Three Bears testing every bed in the house or rifling through somebody's personal effects, but 
I guess I would just say I had a lack of etiquette, right? I wasn't polite. And part of boundaries is being polite and doing what's socially acceptable. Some of those boundaries are implied, other ones we might have to ask about. An example of asking what a boundary is, let's say you're in a conversation, somebody's sharing something personal with you, they're getting deep with you, you have a few questions, you think you might know a little bit here and there that could help them. You should ask them first whether it's okay to either A, ask them a few questions, or B, give them advice. A wise woman once told me that unsolicited advice is criticism, right? So make sure you can give that advice by not crossing a boundary uh, before you give it. Is it okay if I ask you a few questions and share my personal experience and my thoughts on what you just shared? That's respecting a boundary. Let's talk about a scenario and how this scenario might work if boundaries were set the right way um, and how boundaries can help you hold another person accountable. So for this situation, I'm gonna choose co-parenting. I do not have kids. I think God gives children, not always, or we wouldn't be here, um, to those that can handle them. Uh, I'm beginning to think maybe I could have, uh, but I don't have them. And when I spend enough time with nieces and nephews, that few hours is usually just enough to give me my fix. And then I go back to being a childless and that's okay. So let's say you're co-parenting with someone and let's say it's a controlling person or an arc. They're not going to take personal responsibility. They're certainly not going to do the right thing in this situation. So before you find yourself in that situation, it would be very appropriate to set boundaries. I would submit to you that my method or suggestion for setting boundaries would be simple. Document them on paper. How much lead time do you need before they contact you and want to see the child? What can they do with the child? Where can they do it and with who? How can you make sure that co-parent respects the child's schedule? Uh, how can you make sure that in your time of need when you need to co-parent and have them take over the reins how do you know you're not interrupting them or not respecting one of their boundaries so what i would suggest is simple whether you do it on a laptop or a simple piece of paper before you get in a situation where they're crossed set your boundaries write them down there could be 5 10 15 20. always share that with the other parent and empower them and ask them give me your thoughts or your notes on the boundaries i've set and feel free to add your own we can discuss them if you'd like once they are discussed and agreed upon, sign that document. Put your John Hancock, have them put their John Hancock on that paper and make that an official document that you can use to confirm your reality and hold them accountable. So let's take an example. Let's say you've asked them to give you eight hours, 24 hours notice before they can come over and see their child. And they call you and they say, hey, I'm at the gas station right down the street and I'll be there in five minutes. You could let them come over in that five minutes and see the child thinking, it's just the one time, how could it hurt? But you're setting a dangerous precedent. Now they're gonna think they can show up at any time of night. If you put in those boundaries, you need a certain amount of time, then you should be able to send a text saying, I would love for you to see Johnny, but again, per the boundaries, I'm asking for eight hours notice. If you'd like to come tomorrow, let me know now or early tomorrow, and we can get that set up. Boundaries are also helpful for you to confirm your own reality. I know with controlling people, we're subject to a lot of gaslighting. People can make us think that we're too sensitive, we're we're not laid back enough and having boundaries that are agreed upon in the past are a great way to confirm your reality with that person as well. So when they do gaslight, you, you can say no dice, bro, or no dice, sis. Here are the boundaries that we agreed to. If we're looking at the boundaries, boundary number three, subset B, clause number three, it clearly states X and that X was violated. So what are we gonna do moving forward to make sure that doesn't happen again? That would be an effective way to set boundaries. So you've made it to the end of this video and I want to ask you, think of a controller in your life. Think of somebody you have not set boundaries with or even a healthy friendship. I'd like you to put in the comments why those boundaries need to be set, some interesting ways you can think of to set those boundaries and how you might make that actionable and do that today or tomorrow. Thanks for sticking in there, guys. Can't wait to talk to you about R, which is reliability. Expect the shorts preview and a video soon. Until then, Thrivers, stay up.